Um, all right, then now let's look into network-based attacks. That is a different kind of, different class of attacks. So until now, most of what we looked at happened on the device. All of this now happens basically outside of your device. Every time, it, whoops. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see if that happens again. Um, yeah. So uh, every time your your device interacts with them, something, I'll just try to talk over this. Um, it will it will send some data over the network. And if it uses wireless wireless networks, um, then there are lots of different different. Uh, yeah, variations. You have unencrypted wireless LANs, actually very common in the US, for example. Every, most hotspots are just unencrypted and everybody can read your data. Done. So if you, you can just passively sit there and collect all the data going to that access point and look at it however you want. Um, there's WEP. This is a very old encryption scheme for wireless LANs, which is completely broken. There's WPA and WPA2, which is kind of state of the art currently, but even those can be broken as long as you know the uh, network key. So every connection uh, in a WPA2 network is actually encrypted with its own encryption key, but you still can, um, can access the data if you, for example, know the password for the wireless network. And if it's the network in some hotel or something, then it's probably just written somewhere on a piece of paper where you can actually read it. And uh, so the only way to be really secure on this kind of network is to uh, use an additional VPN on top of the uh, network itself. But then, of course, again, this means uh, more steps, more uh, difficulty basically for the user. And for that reason, it's uh, only done very, very rarely. So. Uh, in general, you can't assume that any data you send over a, a wireless LAN can't be intercepted at some point. Um, the same actually applies to, um, to wireless, uh, to, to wide area networks, so to, to cellular networks. Um, there are even, even more issues here. For example, you can uh, very easily identify a specific mobile device and a specific uh, SIM card, so to say. That's these uh, IMSI and IMEI numbers. IMEI is the equipment number, so every, every mobile device has its individual number. And IMSI, subscriber ID, is basically the ID of your SIM card. And for example, apps are able to read those numbers if they have the right permission and can then uniquely uh, identify you across, across different networks, for example. Um, what's also possible is to extract the um, cell location of a specific user. Once you know one of these numbers, then you can use um, the so-called signaling system 7. If you have the right kind of access, um, then you can use that to locate uh, that device or that user globally and see what, what network cell uh, they are logged into. Um, in theory, the signaling system 7 is part of this big backend of UMTS services, which we briefly looked at. Um, and so it should just be accessible to mobile, um, uh, mobile companies so they can exchange data. Um, however, you can very easily get access to that even as an individual if you uh, know basically the right kind of, of access point to ask, then it sometimes will just give you access uh, individually. And of course, governments, for example, also have access to that. So they can, should be able to track down users as soon as they know one of these uh, identifying numbers. Um, and uh, even, even if you discount that kind of, uh, that kind of um, information about your location, about your privacy, even your data isn't really uh, secure on a, um, on a 
uh, cellular network because you always can run into things like, like fake base stations. This is also something that's possible. Um, your cell phone or rather your SIM card has to authenticate to the cell tower to get a connection, but it's not the other way around. That means everybody can set up a base station which uh, any cellular device will then try to connect to. If it's the one with the with the strongest signal, for example, because it's close to you, then your phone will just try to connect there and ne will never notice if the uh, base station is, is actually not from your official mobile provider. So there's actually an open source software, which is called um, OpenBTS, which allows you to set up your own cell tower, basically. Um, so, for example, there are some, some remote island nations in the Pacific which have actually used that non-maliciously to set up their own cell network because it would have been too expensive for, uh, for the big phone companies to put up their own cell towers, so they just did it themselves, which is really great. But, on the other hand, you can also use that to create a fake base station, which you can then use to, to intercept data. So, in general, it looks like this. You have a, the, the official base station, then you have this kind of backend network, which we already looked into, and that then connects to the internet or to, to the regular old phone network, and the wireless data going between your device and the base station is encrypted. But if you now trick the phone to connect to this kind of fake base station, then um, you can either downgrade the encryption on that link or you can just collect the data inside the IMSI catcher. And then uh, on the other side, that uh, IMSI catcher, that's how it's called, that fake base station, will then uh, emulate a client device, a mobile device again, and connect to the, to the regular base station. And in between it can then, then collect all your data and um, all your phone calls, basically. Yeah. But is it kind of like location specific? So I need to make a user install an application, a specific location, so I can cache him to this cache? Or no, before? no. Usually, well, these, you, you can actually uh, buy these from companies like Rode and Schwarz, and I think the, the police, for example, has them. The only requirement is that you get relatively close to the user, because these don't have the, uh, uh, these are just, I don't know, boxes of that size maybe, so they don't have the transmit power which a, which a regular base station on the rooftop has. And so you have to be relatively close to the person you want to you want to uh, to monitor, basically. Yeah. So it doesn't require any specific application on the mobile device. It just no. captures all the. No. Exactly. Okay. So f for the mobile device, it just looks like another base station. And if it's if it's close to you, then the uh, the signal strength will be high, and then your mobile phone will basically just connect to the. Best, the base station with the best signal, and if that's the IMSI catcher, then all your data will go to through the uh, the fake base station, basically. And on the other side, it will then emulate a mobile device again and uh, forward the data to the regular base station. So um, there are apps which you can install which tell you if the um, base station information changes in unexpected ways. So you can sort of try to, to detect that on your mobile device, but you need specific apps for that. So it's not something devices usually do. Yes? Exactly. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. No, you can you can do both. I think most of these 
um, devices, you can put in some kind of filter, which will then only extract data from one specific person. If you know the, for example, the equipment number, um, then you can easily uh, extract data from that. But in general, uh, and for example, if the so the police have been known to use that kind of tool, then they will just collect all the data from everybody who's who's close to that to that IMS eye catcher and will supposedly throw the rest away after they've analyzed it to look for whoever they want to, to, uh, to monitor. Then they should, of course, throw the rest of the data away, but um, nobody knows if they actually do that. So yes, it will collect all of the data of all the people who are close. Yes? Um, well, I think it's actually kind of a limitation of the of uh, UMTS or LTE because they don't require the uh, the base station to actually authenticate to your mobile device. So your mobile device will never be able to tell the difference, and the carriers don't actually really notice. So um, for them, it just looks like another device has connected. Um, and uh, the data being forwarded may look slightly different, but um, I don't think the carriers would actually be able to detect that. Or they d just don't care. That's also s always a possibility. Of course, like, if the carriers care, it can like, avoid such. Well, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if they can avoid it. Um, the only thing they could do would be to terminate the connection, actually. So they can't really, this, this thing is not under the control of the carrier. So, so this would be under the control of either maybe the police or even maybe some kind of criminal um, who wants to collect your data. Um, and so even if the carriers notice that this is happening, then they could at most terminate the connection. That, that doesn't exist. That's, that's exactly the problem. So the SIM card will just connect to whatever is there, basically. That's the reason why this works. Yeah? And what's the best um, way to avoid this? Like, um, if you don't want to your cell phone to connect to this IMS, can you do? There are apps which, for example, tell you if the uh, encryption on the uh, wireless channel is switched off. So if the base station basically requests your phone to turn off encryption, which is what the IMS iCatcher does, then there are apps which will notify you. But uh, so the, you can basically just try and see if you, if you notice it yourself and then you can turn off your phone, for example. But uh, apart from that, there's uh, not a lot you can do against it. So for example, that's also again a problem of not having control over the baseband module. Because the baseband module will basically, will basically just do what the base station tells it to do. And if the base station is fake, then it will trust the fake base station anyway. So um, yeah, again, you can uh, try to, to basically keep yourself informed about what the base station tries to do and then you may, may have to make the decision by yourself to, uh, to turn off your phone or enable airplane mode or something like that. But um, there's no really built-in capability against that kind of, of attack. Okay. Other questions? All right, all right. <laughs> okay.